What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 35 in the Math 1 questions that North Carolina released this past school year. We can see that we're just trying to find the solutions to this equation. 4x squared minus 52x plus 169 equals 121. Now there's actually two ways to solve this, um, and each of these ways is going to or is going to uh, test us on one skill, one method, is going to have us work with the left side of this equation as a perfect square trinomial. The other method is going to have us set the left side equal to zero and factor in order to solve it. So let's go ahead and start on the first method, working with what's called a perfect square trinomial. So the way I'm going to test if this is a perfect square trinomial, and it is, is first I'm going to verify that both of these numbers are square numbers. And then I'm going to find each of their square roots. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 169 is 13. Next, I'm going to make sure that when I multiply these together and multiply them by 2, I get this number here. So let's say I do 2 times 13 times 2. This actually gives me 52, so that checks out. Well, finally, I'm just going to take these numbers and put them into this form it'll be the x or the square root of the x squared coefficient times x the sign next to my x coefficient so minus and then the square root of my constant so i got 2 from the square root of 4 i got 13 from the square root of 169 i multiplied these by 2 to make sure they equaled 52 and once i figured out that that was all good I took this square root, multiplied it by x, this square root, made it a constant, this sign in front of the x term, and um, replicated that here. So now, I know that 2x minus 13, all squared, equals 121. Now at this point, I have a square number and something else that's been squared, so I can go ahead and do the opposite of squaring to get rid of that, just like I would subtract if I saw addition. Uh, so square root of that, square root of that, this all goes away. And when I take the square root of just a number, I'm going to have to do uh, something a little bit different. I'm actually going to have to say that this 2x minus 13 is going to be part of two equations. The square root of 121 is 11, but this could be positive 11, or it could be negative 11. Now I have two two-step equations to solve. I'll start with this one. I'll get rid of minus 13 by adding. In fact, I can do the same thing over here. Minus 13 and plus 13 cancel in both equations, leaving me with 2x equals, and 11 plus 13 is positive 24, but now negative 11 plus 13, you can do that in a calculator or use your rules of integers to get that it's positive 2. And now I just need to divide by 2 in both these equations. 24 divided by 2 is 12, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So our solutions are positive 12 and positive 1, which matches answer D. And now, uh, with, a, with the magic of editing, I'm going to erase all of the writing that I've done so far so we can solve this the other way. All right, so this is now blank. I know that my solutions are 1 and 12. I'm just going to use the other way of solving this to get there, and that is to set this side of the equation equal to 0. And I'm going to do that by subtracting 121 and getting rid of all the numbers over here. This becomes 0, and I'm left with 4x squared minus 52x plus 48. And it's at this point that I'm going to use the strategy that I have done in a couple other questions like this and factor. And factoring always starts by looking at your coefficients and seeing what kind of common factor you can find. In this case, it's 4. So I know that this is going to be equal to 4 times. And then 4 times x squared would give me 4x squared. 4 times 13 would give me 52. So minus 52x becomes minus 13x. And then 4 times 48 would give me... Uh, or 4 times 12 will give me 48. So this becomes x squared minus 13x plus 12. And now I'm going to do that slightly cheating thing that I do and ignore all of this stuff because we're trying to find zeros anyway. 
and if any of our linear factors equals zero, the whole thing equals zero. So I can just focus on this part now and try to factor it. And in order to factor, since I don't have a coefficient in front of x squared, I'm going to look for those magic numbers, a and b, where if I multiply them, I get 12, and if I add them, I get negative 13. So what are some factor pairs of 12? Well, we have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. None of these add up to positive 13, but if I say, wait a minute, what if this were negative 1 and negative 12? This is still okay for this criterion, because negative 1 times negative 12 still gives us positive 12, but then I can subtract these and get negative 13. So now I have enough information to put all or to change this into its linear factors of x minus 1 and x minus 12. And now I just need to set each of these individually equal to 0. So what number minus 1 equals 0? That's just 1. And then what number minus 12 equals 0? That is just 12. So using two different methods, I got the same answers. And like I say with any question that there's more than one way to solve, it's good to have more than one way to solve this in your back pocket. Um, especially on a tricky question like this where you could very easily start to second guess yourself and think you've made mistakes. Just try to remember if there's more than one way to solve a problem, and then if you need to, use both methods.